So this is uh, JP from New Hampshire Regional Cop Block. Uh, we just got pulled over by state police earlier for like really no reason. First he's saying, oh, I saw a red and blue light. And then he's saying he saw a swerve. He can't get his story straight. So I want to find out what this guy's up to. And uh, we're in Claremont. And this is um, Industrial Engravers Incorporated. And it's, um, it's uh, 10065. It's uh, cruiser number five. What's going on, man? Any reason why you flung around uh, on us like that? Yeah, just doing patrol. Yeah, yeah, you get um. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. Well, we saw you going the other direction. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> what are you guys up to? Watching you guys. Yeah. We're doing a story on uh, per capita stops. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. You agree? Yeah. What's a per capita stop? It's uh, the, the town that uh, by population have more stops, like Verse Keene, Concord, Claremont. Oh, yeah, kind of like the stops. Like yeah. Of people. yeah. 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 We just got pulled okay, over. Okay, so go What's that? We just got pulled over by Stadies a little while ago. Right over here. Oh, is it in Charlestown? Yep. Did you hear it? I didn't hear it. No. no. Sometimes we get, we do have like scanning with them and whatnot, but if somebody's talking over them, they're like rolling the back. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we don't always hear it. Sometimes they're at a range too. What's well, uh, Ethan and JP from uh, New Hampshire Regional Cop Lock at coplock.org? Yeah. No, we write stories and our website's New Hampshire Regional Cop Lock How old are you guys? 20 something? <laughs> 20. I'm 41. 41? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just asking. Why? I don't know. I was just wondering. <laughs> I'm 25, but that makes you feel better. So you're getting that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why, should, I, should I assume you guys are like 70? Oh, man, well. Yeah. If I had a walker with cameras on it, I'd walk up the now street. I, agree. I, mean, I, I don't know. I know what you guys are saying. Well, the, 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 only thing, the only thing with me, because I'm pretty, some of my videos are pretty famous. Yeah. Um, the only thing with me is the uh, the preconception that cops have. Like he did, they did it to him uh, just now. They automatically try to incriminate the person to give up something that they're doing wrong when really nothing really happened. Yes. He, they they were convinced they saw a red and blue light, even though we don't own one, we don't have one, we don't operate one. But he goes, "You have one on. You have one of those those apps. You you know understand one of those apps." And he goes, "Yeah, I understand that they have those apps." He literally was convinced that he said he had an app that did that. It's I don't know. You know how it is, dude. It's, a, it's kind of the game they play. Like I could have gone up to you guys right now and been like, "What are you guys doing on the side of the street?" You know, but I mean, yeah. you guys are free to walk on the side of the street like one. Well, so in reality, you're not really doing anything wrong. So I don't have any yeah. grounds. If you know the laws, it's, it's just a game. So. Yeah. Well, it t it's t town town police. It depends on the town and it depends on what they're used to. Yeah. Um, you know, Keen are very used to because they they've been getting hit by free staters, you know, for a long time. I think it depends on on the officer too. Like who, like, you know, are you liberty minded? Are you <coughs> are you different than that? Are you military minded? I mean, everyone's yeah. It's it, it, it the the the. The difference is huge. I mean, combat-oriented thinking and versus libertarian thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's it the the distinguishing factors with uh, their attitudes is night and day, night and day. And I've dealt with a few, man. I've been in Atlanta. I've did cop lock in New York, Mass. Oh, New York. New York is ridiculous. Oh, New York's nuts, man. Stop and frisk and all that is not even it's not even constitutional. No, no, it's definitely not. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> What the hell are you doing in a cruiser, man? I don't know. It's like, I'm, I don't know. I'm libertarian leaning, so it's like, you know, I think everyone has a part to kind of, you know, yeah. like something, try to make it better, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how I got to do it. So I just treat people the way I want to be treated, and I know how it is. Dude, everyone has run ins when you're growing up, right. so you get treated like There he is. Hey, why does it keep doing that? You said you were a libertarian? No, oh, yeah. 
Say what? I said I am. I haven't. I didn't vote in this election because I think it's right. But I mean, I voted for Ron Paul in the primaries last time and Gary Johnson in the sure. general election, and then this time I just I don't know. I kind of gave up on the whole vote. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. No shit. Wait, no. what's your name there? If you don't mind me asking. Brian Law. Brian Law. Yeah. Are you are you a free stater or anything like that? I don't know. I think I'm just a regular dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. I um. I mean, I was in the military in the National Guard, and then I did that. Out of college, went on two appointments. Like, Here in New Hampshire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that? Here in New Hampshire? Yeah, I grew up over in uh, near the Sunnaby area. Oh, okay. All right. So, I don't know. You know how it is. Like, there's... When I was growing up, where did you guys grow up? Uh, Missouri. Oh, really? So, yeah. My, mine was even. It was uh, Brooklyn, New York, and Brockton, Massachusetts. Oh, really? Between, Mass? Between parents, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have cousins in Mass. My mom won one, one, so I get the worst of both accents. They get a Boston <laughs> accent and a Brooklyn accent, which kind of screws me a lot, you know? Hey, I mean, you know how New Hampshire is, too, like back in the day. Well, I live in Keene. I've been in Keene since 06, so. 06. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, um, you know, prime example is, we get these calls every once in a while, and somebody's like, there's a guy carrying a gun around. It's not illegal to carry a gun around. <laughs> And yeah. then you go there. I mean, I understand, like, if somebody's carrying a gun around and they're pointing it at somebody or they're being crazy, yeah, definitely. But if you're right. in Walmart and you just have one strapped to your head and it's being carry it's like you're going to Right. I mean, even the Army, they, they told us, you see someone walking around with the AK, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Everyone's got one. Yeah. The one thing I understand about the Army is they want you to go overseas, you know, with weapons, obviously, but you can't even carry on base. It just makes it sense. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't trust you enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I don't know. Everyone's. No, but everyone's you'll see. Like, you'll you'll run see. Into, you run into some people. It's like <coughs> anything in life. It's not just like cops, you know. Because like if you say, it's kind of like generalizing. Well, I don't want to collectivize. Like if I if I meet a cop, I don't want to be like, yeah, you people killed four thousand people the past three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't like doing that. I only do that to try to piss off the ones that kind of like the one we just met. Yeah. I only target those um, yeah. belligerent, authority, uh, very authority, brute-driven cops. Uh, but for the most part, I usually have a good conversation like I am with you. I actually, I, I stopped a guy back last <coughs> April. It was over in Washington Street. And his, it was, I stopped him because he was driving his wife's car. And his, his registration was expired. It expired in like... It was like 10 days over here, so I was oh. gonna give him a ticket anyway. Just say hey, just let you know. Right. Yeah. He started recording me, and I think he owns a computer business, like either Walpole or. He just started a startup, but. It's the same way, like he was cool, you know. I had a great conversation with him. Where it's, yeah. it's all in how you approach people, you know. If some people all of a sudden they get a camera in their face and they start getting defensive, they want to like try to pull yeah. the authoritarian type of attitude. You know? Oh, yeah. It just doesn't work. I mean, we had a like, stady the other night just immediately escalated. He was yelling at us before we were. Even yeah, close you should to check it. that video <laughs> yeah. out, man. Well, the other thing too is like if you do this job, it works the same way with if you run into like a criminal or someone that is actually violating somebody's rights, like if they're stealing a property or right. you know, they assault somebody. There's some people like if, if people are really drunk, there's some people you can't de-escalate no matter what. Yeah. But a lot of times, if you show all people really want in life is to be respected. If you show people respect. Oh yeah. Most of the time it'll work. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, one of the keen cops last year told uh, one of the newer cops, and I I yeah. overheard the conversation. He says JP's almost like uh like a bee's nest. If you start rattling in his cage, he's gonna sting you and just go after you, you know, with everything he's got, you know, legally. Yeah. Um, if you just leave them alone, say hi, and just be respectful, you'll never have to deal with them, ever. You'll never have to deal with them. It's the same way in the military, you know, you meet, like, you'll meet a lot of great leaders, but you'll meet some people that'll make you want to get out. Oh, yeah. Just because they're, it's their way or the highway, they don't, they're not about the teamwork, they don't listen to, you know, their subordinates, and it can ruin it for everyone else, you know, so. I just feel like it's like that everywhere. Well, you know those old ones, man. It'll take for them to be an old three to figure out how to lead. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> they get that butt of uh, they get, the authority goes right to their head. <laughs> so you guys are living in Keene now? I, I've been in Keene, uh, well, I was in Gilsom for about a year, year and a half, I think, and then I went back to Keene. 
Um, but a blue-eyed blonde brought me up here. And then I married a different blue-eyed blonde that ended up being Free State Project person. So I'm not a Free Stater, but yeah. it's fun being married to one anyway. I got like a list. You know you're married to a Steve, you know, Free Stater when? What's that? You know the jokes, uh, like, you know you're a redneck when? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know you're a Free Stater when? <laughs> Weed's the only thing they think about. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, you're, you're married to a free stater when the... Well, you guys just had the convention, right, down in Manchester. Yeah, Liberty right? Forum. Yeah. Yeah, we went We one. went one day. What's the one that's in the summertime? That's like a pork fest. Pork fest. That's the one to go to. Yeah, I got to check that out. Yeah. You should, you should. Yeah, Tilton, Tilton's a good area. It's in Tilton? Well, Littleton. Littleton, oh, Littleton. right? It's yeah, near Littleton. Lancaster. That's it's right next say. to Littleton, yeah. yeah. I thought it was up north. Yeah, Littleton. It is this way up there. It's right next to Littleton. I yeah. did a big story in Littleton this past summer. I wish I could move up north. I like it up there. Oh, yeah? On days like this, you won't. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the, the night we had that issue with the, the belligerent cop coming at, at us. Oh, my God. Um, Negative 30. It was uh, 30 below in Henniker that night. Oh, so was it a, was it a Henniker cop? Or? No, it was, it was a statey. We saw a pullover, so we pulled over a good 100 yards away. Yeah. And I put the strobe on. I had... Uh, all our press stuff on and he literally came up to us put your flashlight down he had his flashlight right in my face oh, really? so i pointed mine in his face i'm like you put yours down first put your flashlight you first state police put your... i'm cop block i'm jp it was like a flashlight war for a good three minutes it's a good video <laughs> i just got accused for editing and i never edit i dropped raw video on my youtube channel yeah there's no editing at all I just figured out how to splice two videos together and it took me a week to figure it out. <laughs> to edit a whole video and, yeah. and no, no, that's not me, man. I'm, st I'm just barely getting out of A tracks, bro. Oh, yeah, me too. I don't really know yeah. how to edit anything as far as videos. My three year old teaches me how to play Grand Theft Auto 5, man. Dad, Dad, no, they, you don't press that button. This is super jump. Yeah, it's because we grew up in like the Nintendo days and we had like A, B, start, and select, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. Mike Tyson's punch out. Yeah, some Excite bike. Exc yeah, that was the Excite bike. Oh yeah. The first Tony Hawk. <laughs> yeah, that was. How long are you guys up here for? Um, we try. we usually do a loop. Um, we were gonna go go through uh, Newport and then up through Gilsum. Yeah. And then Sullivan, and then back into Keene. But as soon as we got into that high elevation, there's already about an inch of snow on the ground. In Newport, so we had to we turn around to come down lower, yeah. and it, it it worked. It's safer. So, is there any uh, like black ice or anything? Oh, wicked up there, yeah, there yeah. As soon, literally, as soon as you go by uh, Home Depot and head up that flat, it started like, I mean, visibility is pretty poor too. So, did you see our buddies just went by the Stadies? The yeah, he went by. Fun. Probably five see minutes. My car sitting up there. <clears throat> What are you guys doing? Did you swerve? Yeah. yeah, I can't believe. I had the camera going the whole time. He's like, we saw you swerve. I'm like, so which one is it? You saw blue and red light, or we swerved, which were all oh, both. I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the third one now. I'm waiting for the third lie. How long did the traffic stop go for? Not long, just- Not long, when I started minutes. telling him our rights, I'm like, do you have reasonable suspicion when you pulled us over? Get out of the car now! Get out of the fucking car! And then the second one pulled up out of, the, the second one with him came out of nowhere. I thought he'd like jump through the woods. <laughs> he threw me on the side of the car and put like almost put his hands behind my back. And then he saw the press thing. And I'm like, you know, you guys understand we're cough plug, right? <laughs> we're the, we're press. We're out here watching you. Where was this? This was right, right up, maybe about uh, two miles up the road in, okay. Clint, in uh, Charlestown. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was uh, what, about an hour ago? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be posting that immediately because yeah, that's one. that's gonna be a fun one. Yeah. And I want I want more people to understand like there's there's good conversation with the cops out there. We're not just you know out there targeting the jackasses because that's most of the content we have. We don't we don't upload most of this stuff. So probably should do that more often. Yeah. I'll I'll post this <laughs> I'll post this conversation which is good which shows it it, it, it people don't realize it does a huge deal. Well, that's the other thing. When you talk to of, cops. That's the other thing that's kind of bothersome. Like, we went to a domestic the other day. I think it was like a week ago or something. 
and the guy was, we were just talking to him, and he was like begging us to arrest him. And it, it was kind of like a, we we're still trying to figure out what went on. Well, that's man. adrenaline anger going on. Yeah, he, well, he'd been drinking, he was pissed, I get yeah. it. But then he was like, oh, I should take my hands out of my pockets. Because I know how all you cops are. And I was like, I don't care if you put your hands in your pockets. It's not... <laughs> I, like, I just don't like when people say that. Like, oh, I know how all you cops are. It's just, like, right. generalizing people. Well, that's part of the scrutiny part of the job. Like, yeah. That public scrutiny thing sucks. Well, you have to just take it with a grain of salt and kind of, you know, just let it go. It is what it is. And Like I say, if you just treat people the same, you don't get amped up. A lot of people feed off your emotions. To, if you to be honest... Chill, yeah. Usually, to be know. honest, we've uh, I've only had two interactions with Claremont Police. The last time was on that road mm. where those... uh. You know where the uh, family shelter is? Oh, yeah. Um, Central Street, I think. Yep. Um, we were there. There was some type of break in or something, and the two <clears throat> officers there, there was a female cop and two others, and they were they were very nice to us. Um, well, I the chief does a good job here. He's, he's all about, like, community policing and treating people fairly. Yeah, who's the chief? Chief uh, Alex Scott. Alex Scott. Yeah, I mean, if you guys wanted to, you could... You know, Google it. Him someday or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. Well, because we hit this area a lot. Do they still have the state police substation in the Claremont PD? The office? No, no, they have like an office, but like the way the stadies work is they can, they can pretty much go to whatever police station is. There he is. I I know those tires anywhere. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, they're pretty familiar with me at Troop C, but I've never seen these two. The ones I know up here are cool. I mean, I like them. They're wicked nice guys. I don't know if I don't know who you guys ran into, but well, there's two of them. Um, one of them that likes to lie a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't remember the name, but it's on video. So. Well, we'll get the on the video. I'll take down the name, and the other one gave me his name too. When he when he, when I put my stuff in my my secondary, because I I have a secondary camera right here. Yeah. On my belt. And I have this. I put the strobe on usually, and I put my stuff on the top of the hood. And he literally, he's like, he's like, turn around. I want to make sure you don't have nothing dangerous on you. I'm like, yeah, I'm pressed, dude. You don't need to do. It. I'm JP from Coplock.org. <laughs> and literally, he stopped frisking me. He didn't even go through with it. He stopped, and I turned around. and I started talking to him. And I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. You guys pulled us over for really no reason at all. You flew, you took a Yui, and you did like 98 miles an hour to catch up to us, and then you flew yeah. your blues on. Oh, you were swerving, okay. Okay, tell me another one. Oh, we saw a blue and red light. Oh, okay, <laughs> where, where's the third one, I said? Where's the third lie? I mean, in a way, like, <clears throat> you know how the United States is. It's pretty much the law factory of the world. So, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of traffic laws that, there, there can be cheap stops, but you can pull people over for a lot of reasons that can be legit, even even though it's cheap. So, I mean, if you guys have hit a line or something stupid like that, I mean, you know, who knows? I'm not saying it's right, but. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're going to know me pretty good because I'm going to make their life a little difficult tomorrow. <laughs> Like I say, all the state, all the state troopers I know and Troop C that work here are cool. But I get, I, I get along with, I, I've, I get along with most of them. Today I was at, I do don't take a plea every Thursday, so I'm at the court all morning. Yeah. Um, and I wear all my gear. Um, and actually one of them sat next to me. We had, we were talking for almost an hour, and he confirmed it on video tonight during the traffic stop in Keene. He goes, yeah, you're the dude I sat next to today. Um, he used to be a keen cop. I keep forgetting his name, but it's on. It's on the video. And Julie, I mean, uh, Julie Ray, Trooper Ray, she used to be Liquid Commission. She's oh, yeah, a trooper she just, now. She just started. Think, yeah, right? she was, well, she's been working for the state for a while. Yeah, yeah. She's been a Liquid Commission cop, I think, for three years, and now she's a trooper. This, she's still a rookie. Um, but I remember her going to the bars and stuff last year and the year before. Yeah, I've met um, her once in Claremont. She seems like a really yeah. nice person. Yeah, she's, she was pretty decent to me tonight. And one stop, she was kind of revved up. And, and that's the thing, you know. I, I don't know why they get so nervy sometimes. Um, I mean, the anticipation of uh, something really bad happening to you. And that's why I'm a very, very... I'm, I'm not a big advocate for CAD. Uh, Computed aided dispatch gives cops a preconception, pre-notion about uh, a certain situation. So when you show up, it's you really can't be impartial when you read... This guy hit a cop, you know, 15 years ago and busted his face open. 
I mean, I think the other thing too is like certain situations, even when the shit hits a fan, and then there he is. No, no. Man, my eyes are playing tricks I mean, it's on totally me. Like, I mean, it's totally like it's totally natural to get scared in some, some situations, but no, it's not. You can't be a coward either. You know? Nobody yeah. Likes a coward. Right. Yeah. So I mean, being scared is like natural reaction, but you can't let it dictate how you're gonna act. Yeah. You especially don't want to show it. I mean, like I right. said, no, nobody likes a coward. Yeah. You gotta have it. It it's makes true. you lose control of the situation pretty easy too. Yeah. You're, you just gotta accept the fact that and it's like anything in life. It doesn't matter what your job is or. If you're with your family at the beach, I mean, you could die at any point. And yeah. What do you think it have? You'd be driving down the road and a car could hit you head on. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, it's just, anything could happen. That's just the way life is. Just how's the, um, how's that, uh, that Hollywood batch of heroin reach, uh, clam on at all? The overdose like, rate? I'm not, I'm not too, I don't know too much about the whole drug thing, really. Okay. I see it every once in a while here and there, but. I know there's a ton of Yeah. It's, it's all over the place, you know? It's not really... That's nothing new. I mean, there's been drugs since the beginning of time. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. It, it hits communities, it hits communities hard. I mean, looking at Claremont, uh, how many empty stores there are downtown yeah. is crazy. Man. I, I mean, my opinion on that whole thing is, is... I almost feel like with the fentanyl that gets mixed in it is, is what's really killing people. And, where did that come from? That came from the pharmaceutical company. Yeah, companies. yeah, yeah. The patches and the and the pill form, yeah. Man, I, don't, I don't even look at it as much as being a like a criminal thing as much as people. It's more of a medical issue, you know. People need help. Well, that's why behavioral court and drug courts important because they're more into treatment than uh, throwing these guys into jail. Yeah. Because I think it's eating up the the state and county's finances, like. <laughs> You know, clock, clockwork. The problem with it too, though, is that a lot of the crime that we do see, like petty property crimes and stuff, drug related. Yeah, it's from that. Yeah. So that's the that's the part that it's a double edged sword. You know what I mean? Like it's a medical issue, but it also turns into a criminal issue because people start violating other people's rights. Yeah, like, yeah. Property and stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's, I mean, yeah, you're addicted, but I don't think it's a good excuse for why you right. decided to try to steal from somebody else that's working for what they have. Yeah. You should um you should visit the LEO page on on coplock.org the national site. Um right. they have a law enforcement officer page and um they actually got a few few good ones on there. Um <clears throat> you seem like you have a lot a lot of good ideas. Yeah, I'd like to check out that um that thing up in Littleton this summer, definitely. Yeah, pork fest. Yeah, yeah you'll see you'll see us there. We'll be Did there. You like Adam Kokesh go to that? Oh yeah, he'll be up there. Uh, it's the only thing I'll take time off of work for. Yeah. Yeah, I I can only go Thursday, Friday, in this the late late part of the week, just like we did this past year. But we'll be we'll be up there the late part of the week, which would be which would be cool. We uh, usually camp out the whole week. Right. Yeah. But you know, we 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 got hit with rain last year. This past year we got nailed. It was, it was, that was my first year last year. But I was saying it's like yeah. every year seems to rain a little bit. It's fun. It's fun being a non-free state and mixed in with all these free states. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it was great, man. Nice yeah. meeting you. You too. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. All right, well have a good one. Yeah, be yeah, safe, man. I'll let them know I talked to you guys too, so hopefully you don't.